Hello guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and in this one we are getting it all done in Deliver Us The Moon. Now before we begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more 100% game guides and much more content. Now this is an absolutely stunning game brought to you by developers Keoken Interactive and publishers Wired Productions. Now this game to buy would normally cost you around £19.99 or $24.99 in the US, but it is on Xbox Game Pass right now. As of the 25th of May 2020, it may not be in the future, so keep that in mind. So if you're not on Game Pass right now then, well, get your ass on it. <laughs> now, this is an absolutely brilliant action adventure game with some stunning visuals, effects and absolutely excellent gameplay. It was an absolute joy to play. As for achievements, I mean they are pretty straightforward enough, but you have to know what you're going to be doing. Sadly, it's not a case of simply just blasting through the game and that's it. You know, there's a few story related ones, a few more miscellaneous ones. I will explain when we get to. And there are 62 collectibles for us to get, which gives us even more achievements. Now I will explain the different types of collectibles we need in just a little while. And also you may potentially be looking at around a five to eight hour completion rate. So here we are then, this is the main menu. With that being said, let us begin. Now it's an easy sort of moving your character control wise. It's your typical left stick to move, uh, right stick to look around. Um, if you press the X on the Xbox or square button on the PlayStation, that is how you interact with things. And the only thing that had me confused for five <laughs> was right trigger is basically to zoom in and aim, and left trigger is to sprint when it's usually the other way around. <laughs> but I mean, it is pretty much straightforward enough, and in terms of collectibles, there are four main types we need to collect for achievements, but you will see me pick up and read many other objects. Moonman books, iPads with emails on them, random objects tied to the actual story. So the first thing we need to be doing straight away as soon as you start, there is a Moonman comic. That is your first collectible of the game. Now these Moonman comics, you actually have to press X to read them as well, otherwise it doesn't count. So make sure to do that. But the Moonman comics, there is one in each chapter, so that's six Moonman comics overall. Now, and like I just said with these sort of random objects, you're going to see plenty of like little things tied to different parts of the story, little blueprints there, etc. You'll see me read them again and pick them up. That's in case you want to know a little bit more about the story and sort of what's going on, which I advise to do because it's absolutely fantastic. So yeah, make sure before you leave this area, grab that Moon Man comic. That is your first collectible of the game. So the main four collectibles we are getting for achievements, like I said, are Moon Man comic books. There is one per chapter and six chapters, so that is six overall. Again, like I said earlier, there are Moon Man books and papers you'll see me collect, but they don't have any achievements tied to them. Again, I'll let you know with that. Uh, scannable objects you use with the right trigger. These are pretty obvious as they're usually massive things and turn blue when you approach it. Audio logs, again, in pretty hard to miss places. Also, just before I carry on, go into your settings and what I advise to do is turn your vertical settings or horizontal, I forget which, that's the vertical, sorry, yeah. Max that out to 10. Um, obviously that's up to you, but I prefer to sort of look around quite quickly. So we can head outside now, and by the way, the last bit of collectibles we will be getting are holograms. Same as above, hard to miss locations, and pretty obvious when we see them. But we will be getting absolutely every single one, so you don't miss any or any achievements. So we are outside now in Chapter 1 for the first time, and this is where our first scannable object will be as well. So as you can see there, as soon as I approach it, it turned blue, it's pretty obvious, you can't really miss it but we'll get an achievement for doing this straight away so that is always handy as well going to the only open trailer this isn't the only open trailer that is closed and i for some reason got confused with that um <laughs> but going to this second one here and you can have a little look around. There's another scannable object in here. There are again, there are other things you can look at, zoom in if you want if you're interested in the story at all. And this is what I mean. So there's your scannable object. But what I do first is just pick up this little 
um, Johansson book here. Have a little read of that if you want to. Again, if it's something you want to get interested in. If not, of course, you can just leave it. But make sure before you leave this place to scan this object right here. And then that will be done. Now we can move on from this little area. Go directly to your left and there's going to be a third scannable collectible in this area now. And you'll sort of see this happen a lot through the game. Just uh, nip off to the right here and flip this switch first. That's important. We need to do that. But yeah, you'll see, as I said, you know, there's 62 collectibles in the game. So you'll be scanning a lot, looking at holograms a lot, and looking at audios a lot throughout the game. So I hope you're interested in this stuff because, trust me, it's just so much more than just another typical 1,000 out of 1,000 or platinum. Let's go ahead. Obviously, you know, because in video games, nothing works straight away. Especially if you're an astronaut, everything's just broke and it's all crappy. Even though they're, you know, multi-pound, multi-million dollar corporations and stuff. Anyway, I'm not an expert, but anyway. Pull this right here. She's got the strength of 10 men. I suppose you always will in an astronaut suit. And then climb back down and now it should be fixed. Sadly, it's not going to be as easy as that throughout the entire game, but, <laughs> you know, it's not too bad. Trust me, it's really, really good. Really fun. I haven't steered you wrong so far, have I? Maybe with, um, maybe with a layer and maybe one or two other games, but we'll just f f forget about that. This is actually a good, fun game. <laughs> so you can't go that way. So ignore, you need to go the other way. So eventually I figure it out. There it is. Look. <laughs> Go ahead, push the button, we'll be on our way out now. Take a look at that goddamn stunning view. We last received a microwave power transmission from the lunar colony. At first, no one believed it would be possible to transmit energy from the moon back to Earth. But the WSA proved the skeptics wrong. Sadly, we can't stay and enjoy the view for too long because we're going to be messed up and dead to death by a sandstorm. So, happy days. So, go into this dark building. Always click in the right stick to use your flashlight. It, uh, it does go down, but it, it can automatically rejuvenate when you turn it off. Um, get this code, which is just behind the reception desk right here. 3548. Should be the same for absolutely everyone, but... You know, it's not a puzzle or anything, so you should be golden. So, 3548 then. We are coming up to our first miscellaneous achievement, actually, soon. And that is for simply spinning a globe all the way around. It can get pretty dark at some points during the game. So, if that happens, eh, I'll turn, you, turn your TV brightness up. You'd be fan. Anyway, go down here. There is, like I said... There's a collectible here, but it doesn't actually count towards any achievement collectibles. So I pick them up, and I do read them, as I said, but again, completely up to you. You don't have to, but I've, I've already told you what we need um, to go for the achievements. Now, come into this room at the very end. This is the globe here. Just keep pressing the X button to spin it, and eventually, achievement will unlock. Hopefully, your, um, you know, your finger mashing button doesn't hurt. So there we are then, that's achievement number two unlocked now. You just see me pick up that high gen uh, little badge there. And again, there's there's loads of little sort of Easter eggs and there's loads of little things you can zoom in and have a look and it all just adds up to the achievement, uh, the story, lovely. But here's another scannable board then, so make sure to do that. By the way, if you want to obviously have a look, uh, there's another scannable object right here. Again, if you want to have a look, obviously it says every time pressing the back button or the select button, whatever it is, um, you can actually have a look. They are basically plots with sort of subplots in them. So it's definitely worth it. Uh, definitely worth a read and a listen when you get everything um, sort of collected and everything. It, it, again, like I said, it, t it just ties up the story so nice and you get to see exactly what happened, who did what, and it is absolutely brilliant. So you see me picking up again a few little things in this area the iPads with emails again don't count towards 
any achievements, but they are very interesting as you progress through the game. So now we can just go ahead and move out. And again, you'll always see the checkpoints are pretty decent in this game, I'll be honest. And you'll always see it with the saving in the bottom right hand corner. Move this bit of stair gate out of the way. Again, with your Eddie Hall, Hafthor Bjornsson, Strength, World's Strongest Astronaut here. And just go ahead and nip on through. Pretty dark, so whap your flashlight on. Whap your flashlight. Who says whap your thing out? Uh, go up the stairs. Oh, <laughs> go up the stairs on your left-hand side. This game sometimes can get quite laggy and sort of it might freeze a little bit now and again. So, you know, don't turn your console off in a panic if that does happen. There you go. Look at this uh, whiteboard here. Fortuna 1 is a go. Apparently not. And there is your first audio. So that'll be another achievement for this. But every time you see something like that, that is an audio which you need to pick up and collect. And you see on the left, under database, your sort of plots with subplots with what you've collected. Also scan this big massive rocket right in front of you here and you'll get another achievement. Achievement flying at you. And then, again, a couple of little things you can pick up and read. But as I said before, the main four things we're going for is Moon Man Comics, Scannable Items, Audios and Holograms, which holograms we won't see for a little while yet. Yes. So, off we go. We are continuing. Only one way to go. Up this linear, beautiful path here. And there'll be a lot of these sort of computer monitors we'll be seeing a lot throughout the game as well. You don't have to do anything on them. All you have to do is just click X to interact with it. And then press A to sort of either reboot it or open up doors or whatever. So, it, happy days. We're all good. Faster than expected. Way faster. Time's running out. Keep going, Fortuna. We've been working too long to give up now. Of course it's about to hit us way faster than expected, because then it wouldn't be a video game and it would be too easy, right? <laughs> anyway, we're gonna try and turn the rocket on now. Again, pure video game, it's just, it's continually fudging us over until we can't take it no more. So, we've got to do a few little things. So, there's a door just on the left of the console there, and we will be going out. A few little things we've got to do. It's not too bad. Um, press X to get the lift up. We will be going down it in just a minute. But go up the sort of left-hand side. A little bit of a ladder first. And obviously we'll need to turn the wheel. With our incredible astronaut strength. I don't know what they get fed up there. Is it like that tin bread or that pasty bread? Apparently that's about 16,000 calories. Pure beef, these astronauts. I respect that. And we go to the right-hand side one, but of course, you know, we're going to be about to be fudged over for the third time. Can't even keep a ladder in bloody check, man. And I don't know why you can't... you think we could just jump, really, couldn't you? And sort of grab it and use our massive, world's strongest astronaut strength to get us up. But we don't. So we've got to go down this lift now. Remember the ladder, or the little bit of staircase that we moved earlier? That is something we need now. It is somewhere. So go ahead and just grab that and then use X to use the lift. By the way, it's uh, left bumper or right bumper if you just want to turn it around. You know, pr pretty obvious what you have to do there. Sorry, that's my elevator music. Hope you enjoyed that. Really uh, filled in the time well, huh? <laughs> Probably won't do elevator music anymore. Well, we got a few to go up, so maybe. Anyway, turn it around. I shouldn't have to tell you which way it needs to go, but apparently I just... I didn't even know that, so I'm half stupid, apparently. Uh, <laughs> go up the stairs. Um, try not to get stuck like I did there, and then turn the wheel again. And this means we should now be good to go. Now... What we will be doing, uh, we are coming up to another achievement. Hydrogen valves are closed. Head back inside the control center to prime the rocket for launch. Yes, ma'am. Damn, she... Tell me what to do. I'm only doing this because I want to, okay? But now, <laughs> we should be good to go. Press the key. 
just just get it done. No point. No point in in wasting any time. But now we're coming up to a little time section. Now we can actually get to where we need to be with plenty of time. But to get the achievement, you actually need to climb the ladder at the end with less than five seconds to go. So there's only one path we need to take. The timer will start as soon as we get outside. Now, there it is. So run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the world's strongest astronaut man, woman. Anyway, again, up the stairs to the right. You will feel, you'll feel yourself struggling at this point. Go to the left. Again, only one path to take and then climb the lift. Now, of course, if you do end up missing this achievement, you can just do this again, but just, just get it done now, ain't it? So, up the lift you go. I'm not doing elevator music yet, because the dramaticness music is, is banging at this point, to be fair. Uh, push this button. Now, what you would normally do is, there's a ladder at the very end. Normally, we just rush to it, press X to climb up, but don't do that first. Again, we'll be doing it with less than five seconds to go, so, you know, enjoy the dramatic music, just enjoy the sandstorm death views for a minute, but don't climb it until five seconds left, or less than. So about now would be good. I almost mess it up. Do it with around four seconds left. As you can see, it sort of takes a second to carry on. So there we go. That, this achievement will unlock now, but we're coming up to another achievement. And what you have to do normally at this point is start the rocket and go. But basically, you need to do nothing for about, oof, I say about five to ten minutes so in just a little second you're gonna see a countdown from 15 seconds again at this point you'd normally be flicking switches and stuff ready to go but we need to just do nothing for 10 minutes fail this section five times and it's basically us forgetting our training so I'm only gonna uh, show you this part twice but again you just haven't got anything to do for a little bit um, yeah so you'll see this cutscene then this cutscene, this cutscene, this cutscene, this cutscene, there it is, you took your piss in time, didn't you? But yeah, so obviously we failed to launch and we are dead. We start off in the exact same position, again, I only show you this twice, but you've got to actually fail this part five times, so just keep your eyes all handy, um, just in case, but yeah, you ain't doing nothing for a good while, and then as soon the achievement will unlock when you get to this point The uh, after the fifth time you fail. So it shouldn't be hard to do nothing. I'm sure a lot of us do it very easily. So as soon as you see the achievement unlock, obviously get to flipping switches and doing what you're going to do. I'm not going to talk through this bit. I'll actually try and let you concentrate instead of yammering on. It's not that hard to follow, though. Ground launch sequencer started. Orbital access arm retracting. Perfect, just like we've practiced.
we have lift off we are out of here so that is the end of chapter one so hopefully the games already gave you a good impression guys because uh it certainly did me to be honest so just enjoy the view and the sort of little cutscene for the next few minutes and we get an achievement for basically completing chapter one and now we will start doing all space stuff floating in the air and stuff like that all the stuff the kids love doing Oh, you know, the kids inside us love doing. Ah, uh, wait, that sounded really wrong. It, just enjoy it. The view must have been breathtaking when the first astronauts made their way to the moon just a hundred years ago. They knew an Earth full of life. All we know today is dust. If you can bring the MPT network back online, it could restore the hope humanity lost after the lunar colony fell. We could recover. Rebuild and most of all, start thinking about a future. You'll need to find the MPT transmitter at the Pearson Space Station. From there, the power signal was relayed to Earth. This was the final link in the MPT network before the blackout. If there are answers to find, they're at Pearson. Claire, we need to head down to the shelter. These winds are getting bad. Understood. For Tuna One, this storm is going to jam radio contact. You'll be on your own for a while. To reach the station, you must. Once you're in the purple, this is the second stage of the law. Please, deliver us the moon. So we're now on to chapter two. We've now got to dock our spaceship and we'll do that by actually clicking on the screen. Again, if you ever get confused or lost, which you shouldn't when you're following this guide, but if you ever need to feel what to do, obviously just have a look at your objectives by pressing the back or select button. Now what we have to do, you see the little square um, in the obvious hole? That, as long as that turns green, that means you're basically on target and you're good to go. So just keep moving forward and then press A to go up, B to go down. Again, very straightforward, very easy stuff. But as long as the as long as long your target's green, you are in for a dockingly good time. Connection so you can bring it back online. 
Right, so we're just waiting for this door to open. Now we are coming up to another achievement. Um, there is a, there is something to collect um, by the uh, computer screen. You'll see me go back towards and collect it now. But again, it's one of those that is just purely for story and has nothing to do with achievements. But I go to grab it anyway, just in case, again, it's something that you guys feel like you want to do. I, I never normally do it in other games, but I, I just had to in this. I thought it was brilliant. But we are coming up to a scannable object. Slow down here. You'll see the tower right there. That one you can miss very, very easily. So, of course, make sure to just chill. Don't go speeding ahead. Go ahead, just move forward. Now we're into floaty, floaty boy time. Um, you can press the left bumper and right bumper, and that'll sort of spin you around if you're sort of too much to the right or too much to the left. Now we're coming up to another achievement. We've got three minutes of oxygen, and we've got to do a sort of little puzzle. So in the right-hand side here, you'll see this, like, little gas canister that we need to pick up. Of course, you're going to be moving a lot slower. Obviously, just be aware. You'll probably get used to that. And again... If you're too much over to the right, click the left bumper to go to the left. Um, but put it in this empty little slot here. That will open the doors. These little canisters there are basically oxygen top-ups. Um, go all the way to the left. We'll be grabbing another uh, gas... Ca oh, it's not a gas canister. It's oxygen canister. Or I'm just going to call it a regular canister. because that's Or oh, space canister. Because that's what it appears to be. So go back to where the open entrance comes. Don't worry about your oxygen. You've got plenty of time, to be honest. And just slot that in. That will keep this door open. Now we can go and grab the other one. Uh, this puzzle is really easy. Basically, we just need these two. And we need to put them either side of this screen here. And that's it. And then as soon as you click on the screen, uh, you click reboot. Job done. Oxygen is all good. But for this achievement, go into this room to the right of the screen. And you'll see all of these oxygen canisters here. But we'll just be waiting around until the oxygen gets to around uh, below 10 seconds or below 5 seconds. Something like that. But as long as it gets to below 5 seconds, click X to interact with these. And that'll pump your oxygen up and give you an achievement. So... Brrr. Yeah, you're just sort of waiting around, so uh, how's your day going, guys? Yeah, I'm having fun, having fun with the game, having fun with your quarantine lockdown. Probably not people in England that don't expect. Not huh, not with Boris Johnson in charge, but it's for another video. We, we, we're trying to enjoy the game. Let's not turn this into a political piece of crap. Um, You guys want to hear a joke while we wait? Yeah, go on then. So, what do you call a tick on the moon? A lunatic. <laughs> hmm. What kind of music do planets sing? Neptune's. Uh, uh, hmm. Why did the cow go in the spaceship? He wanted to see the moon. <laughs> what did <laughs> What did the alien say to the garden? Take me to your weeder. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well. Hmm. I'm going to stop now. We're coming up to the achievements. I'm going to stop. Sorry I wasted your time with that. My Call of Cthulhu ones were better. Wink, wink. So yeah, as soon as we get to around two seconds to spare, make sure you're ready. Click the X button to interact, and it should work straight away. Bam, bam, bam. Pick them all up. Shouldn't need all these anyway, so we can... Uh, we'll basically be able to finish... And that's it. That's the achievement should now unlock. Some of the achievements can take their time to unlock. So, you know, either press the pause button before you carry on in case it doesn't unlock straight away. But then go ahead, pick up the other space canister, put it to the left side, and now just interact with the screen, and that'll reboot it. And again, apologies about the goddamn jokes. <laughs> So, now that the hatch is open, we can now fly down. We'll be coming up to another audio. It's, again, straight in front of you. You can't miss it because that's where we've got to go anyway. Expedition team, do you copy? Copy control. We're all set. Ready for descent. The MPT network is still down, so expect the lights to go out as you descend towards Copernicus. Thanks for the heads up, Pearson. Remember... 
And then as soon as we get into Central Hub, you see that sort of poster thing on the wall there? It did just turn blue, but that's our next scannable item. So they sort of come at you sort of thick and fast, the uh, collectibles we need to get. But that's another e easily missable one there, so make sure to scan that. We'll be coming back here a few times anyway, but obviously best to just get it out of the way. Next, we will be looking and going towards Ol Libra, which I assume is the library. Unless that's just something Spanish for something else, or I, I don't know, anyway. You don't have to do that if you don't want, I just wanted to pull that to see how cool it looked outside. And it looked pretty cute. But you see it there, Ol Libra. I, I, not very good. I can barely speak English, to be honest, let alone any other languages, so... Go all the way down, all the way down. And what you'll need to do now is spin yourself the correct way. As you can see, we're upside down here. So again, left bumper or right bumper, whichever way it is. And then we'll now be heading towards the right. The map in front of you is just to see where you are and where you need to go. But go ahead into the right and then we'll be going into our room. And we hit some audio. There's no... Proper collectibles in this room. There is an iPad with emails you can read if you are desperately wanting to. But again, it's just you can have a little look around. I made sure not to made sure to see that there wasn't actually anything to collect because I didn't want. I left no stone unturned. That's how. That's how much I didn't want to mess it up for you guys. Everything is still dark down there. Last time there was an outage. <sighs> did you hear the message from Earth? No. What did they say? They can't even send ships up here anymore without the MPT. It's crazy, right? We're the only ones able to investigate the blackout. Sarah, we need to get you guys down to the And if I'm being sort of honest, I just remember the achievement from Alea where you had to interact with absolutely everything. It brought back very painful memories, so that's why I've done that. But anyway, go into the room directly opposite you now. And first of all, we'll be going for another achievement. Go straight up to the telescope and just keep watching until a cute little teddy bear flies by. So there it is, I'm not sure why that's in the game, but it's a cute little addition and I loved it. Now there's the achievement, but directly to the left there is your second Moon Man comic that we need to pick up. Again, press X to read it, otherwise it does not count. And there's a few... There is another scannable object in this room, but there is also a code which we need to get, which is on the wall right here. 2539, press X to read. I always pressed X to read, it was sort of just in case. Uh, something didn't count or or anything like that. Otherwise, there is an iPad there, which you can read for emails. And the third proper collectible in this room, which or the second, sorry, which is the scannable object there. And again, if you want to make sure, I've got the timestamps in the description below with absolutely every name and everything that... You should have collected when I've collected it, so if you ever get stuck, just press back and make sure that you're all caught up the same as me. So now, go to the door with the pin there, 2539 is what it was, so go ahead, open it up. So once we are through the door, head straight up to the console just directly in front of you there. Uh, press A on it. Like I said, luckily for us, we don't have to do any mini games or any puzzles. Although I feel that could have been a bit fun if they added that into these um, bit of uh, monitors and things. We've done it in the past with sort of hacking games and things like that. But maybe that would have taken the enjoyment out. Who knows? Anyway, but all we got to do is press A, wait for it to do its ting, and now we're coming up to the first sort of pain in the ass achievement. It's not. Difficult by any stretch of the imagination, but what we've got to do, there's a computer um, computer chair 
floating up in the air, and we basically got to take it outside. Um, there's an iPad. Again, you can read emails and things on the right. No real big achievement collectibles, though, so there's only this email that you can look at. But now, you will see me. I'll float up. There's something, again, you can have a look at if you really want to. It's there if you need it. But you see this computer chip? Yeah, we need to take that outside with us. Now, it wouldn't be so bad if we could just scoot it along the floor. But this being space, it's, you know, going to be a pain in the ass to sort of move. And we can't just grab it for some reason either. So, <laughs> you can either get lucky with that first bit like I did there. But it's actually the second bit where we actually take it outside now through these next double doors where I struggle for some reason. So, uh, inspect the screen right there. And this is basically a laser, and we need to open up the airlock. You'll see that there's just two little gold, um, gold sort of locks on it, either side. As you can see, you press right trigger, that'll shoot. And just bash them open, that'll unlock the airlock for us. And then you've got to turn around and then push the button. Now, again, to get the achievement, just push the chair out. Hopefully, uh, your oxygen, of course, is depleting at this point as well. You do get um, oxygen canisters on the way, but obviously the, the better you do this, the quicker you do this, the better. But as you can see, me being a bum and really taking my time with it, yeah, it, not all is lost, so I wouldn't panic too much. <laughs> Come on, you son of a little bitch. Ah, there we go. Hit him in, hit him in. Home run, home run, baby. There we go. So there's the achievement for that then. Collect this, uh, well, what it is, is our little laser. Now, so we can collect that, job done, and we finally get the bloody achievement for that. This is going to help us get through the next part, as you can see. So again, just like it was with the arm uh, outside to let us in here, it's the right trigger, but you can only do it when you get close enough. And the the aiming can be a little bit finicky. Um, you've got to get it pretty much spot on, and it's sort of it can be a little bit difficult to aim in certain situations. But you know, it's just something you just easily get used to, so it's not a problem. And this next bit, basically, all we're doing is just going through the next bit. We're we're doing exactly the same thing, going through each doors, um, uh, picking up oxygen wherever we can. And that's it, there's nothing to collect or do apart from this one sort of linear path. So follow along and enjoy. See, that wasn't too bad, was it? Push the button, that'll get our oxygen all the way back, and we get our next audio streetway, pretty much unmissable. And if you do end up missing that, then fair dues to you, that is some epic failage right there. Um, again, we'll just follow this little linear path, and right at the end of it, we will see a big, massive Orion wing plate, that which we can scan. Again, when you approach it, it turns blue, so... Basically, you can't miss that one either. All the lights are shutting down. Are you alright, Wolf? What just happened? I can't see a thing. Everything is dark out here. We lost power from the MPT. The whole station is down. Can you find your way back to the airlock? Negative. I don't have a visual. Right. I'm sending Alex to block the airlock doors. Do you see him? So head into the room on the right then. We can't actually go straight forward yet. Get your little 
laser friend out. Get rid of the golden locks. Goldie locks. And again, don't worry about these talking about timing and you need to get out in 30 seconds. It's just... It would have been more pressure if it did have an actual timer on it, but it doesn't, so it's all good. Now, there's these little electrical wires which we need to be extremely careful about. You can get hit once or twice, but a third time and you die. So, just be very, very careful. Stick to the right-hand side where you can. You can sort of see where you get shocked. If it's from, you know, if you get shocked from above, go down a little bit, and that's, that's it, really. So, that bit is not too bad at all there you go you see me just shoot the golden bit at the end we can now proceed and i was just having a check seeing if there's any uh any collectibles in there because this game is full of them so now we can go through there was an electric bit but there before now this next bit we've basically got to do uh four or five puzzle i think it's four puzzles and obviously they get a little bit more progressively difficult. So the, this is the first one, which is not a puzzle, which is always handy. So we can just grab the canister. And then when we back out, you see four empty canisters, which we all need to uh, put in. So go ahead. So once you collect it, the one wall stays uh, goes dark. And then the next one lights up. So for this one, all we're doing is just shooting again, this sort of golden barrels or whatever that sticks out again this one isn't too difficult but it's the next two which have electricity flowing through them as well which can be a bit of a pain I love how far you can chuck it in, and it goes in absolutely perfectly, that is some good reach. So here we go then, the third out of the four puzzles, and now this seems difficult, but as long as you take your time and you're very careful with it, it shouldn't be a problem. You may get shocked once, maybe twice, but that should be fine, so just take a look down very, very slowly. I will get shocked here. I thought I was safe, but again, it's not too bad. But as soon as you take out this canister, you're free to go. Again, then, with the absolutely epic throw, you should be playing American football, man. Not being an astronaut. So for this next bit... We now have to get rid of all the golden barrels, which basically get rid of the pipes with electric on them for us to obviously get by. Now, this one is a little bit more complicated than the last electric room, but again, it's just a case of slowly making your just slowly making your way through. Take a look down to make sure that you're not getting too close. And again, it shouldn't be too bad. This first bit's okay, but it is just this bit you need to be extremely careful at. So and with it, you, you do keep falling ever, ever so slightly. So you've got to sort of keep your finger just pushing the A button ever so slightly so you don't get shocked. So as you can see there, you just got to take your absolute time with it. And there we go. So hopefully you can get through that, though, with no problems. Again, as soon as you take out the canister, the electricity stops. Put the fourth one in, and we can continue. But literally, that's... You know, that's only, the only advice, sorry, I can give you with that is just take your time, look down, and be careful with it. But that's it. We've hit another save point. We've hit another checkpot. So if you need to go for a piss, go for it now. Well, I suppose you can just pause the video too. It makes no difference, really. But, <laughs> but um, we are now flying through the door. When it opens eventually... So there we go go then now we're just going to head back up and what we're going to be basically doing is going through the door to old libra the library or the library the library or the spanish version of whatever the hell it is and we'll be basically pushing the 
button, which we couldn't do before, where we first got the computer chair to get that achievement. So we're sort of going back on ourselves because all types of crap is happening now. And what's going to happen is, well, we're going to be blasted. I told you, blasted right into space. <laughs> now, make sure to press the X button here. Get your X button ready. There we go. We'll grab that. Otherwise, you basically die and do it again. Now, we've got to swim back, but our oxygen is depleting fast. So, just follow the exact same path that I do. Uh, they're, they're pretty obvious where the little oxygen canisters are. Um, but again, you, you will be pushing forward, so keep pushing forward, this isn't an automatic thing, you keep pushing forward, you keep pressing B to go down and A to go up. But again, follow the same path I do to get all the oxygen and you'll make it to the end without an issue, unless your helmet comes off and then your head sort of goes big and explodes. Oops. Get your finger on that right trigger here. We'll be getting these two locks and getting an oxygen canister out of this. So as soon as it starts shooting, grab them both and then grab the oxygen canister and be on your way. So with this oxygen canister, we'll have just enough time to be able to finish this off. Shoot that, keep going forward. There's nowhere else to go, just go forward and then push the button at the very, very end, which is just left to the console here. Bam, try and swim down though, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, almost messed that up myself, but as soon as you do that, everything returns to normal. I tell you what, it's not easy being an astronaut, is it? But that's it, that is the end of chapter 2 then, now we can get on out of here and get to chapter 3. See, that wasn't tense at all. And in space, I suppose, when you crap your pants, it'll all uh, fly away anyway, wouldn't it? So we're all good.
So here we are then. In chapter 3, we've just about managed to not die, which is always handy. So, first of all then, when you get a, uh, when you get up, just follow the, <laughs> follow the room around. And you'll see this little console here. Let's go ahead and click on that. And then we can just move on. Don't have to wait too long for this. So now we are back into normal walking mode and normal running mode. Which probably feels nice, nice actually, after you float around. So just go around the desk here to find your first bit of audio of the level. Hello. It seems and directly from here, go into the first open room on the right, and we will find our first scannable item of the level. Level didn't mean to sound so high and gay with that. Uh, again, you can have a look through the room again. I picked up about three or four of these boxes now and only now did I realize it's actually all pretty pointless so uh, um, there is something on the right it's just um just a little book and again I, I do continue to pick these up as I do find them the ones that especially the iPads with the emails on them it I find it super fascinating on how this whole story played out but from that room then we will don't think there's anything to collect in these two rooms. I think they're just all story related sort of collectibles. Yeah, so of course, there, there you go. Read the iPad then with the emails if you wish. I do go into the next room, but again, this is basically another sort of newspaper sort of clip in. Um, Again, it's just all to do with the story. It's not an actual collectible that's tied to achievement, but it's just there if you want it. And a cute little drawing made by me, age 30. <laughs> yeah, I can't draw. Uh, now we can actually just move on then. Again, you can interact with that if you want, but there's no need to do that. So we'll just follow the path. Follow the path around. And now what we're going to be doing is getting an achievement for witnessing our first hologram. Like I said earlier, these are pretty obvious once you see them. All you got to do is just press X to watch it, and you can actually toggle out of it by pressing the X button. Makes no difference though, but just enjoy the story for all it's worth, which I'm sure you've been doing so far. Serious? Well, have you lost your mind? We can't leave the colony behind like this. Not during this blackout. Not with the MPT signal still offline. People on Earth depend on us. Don't concern yourself with them. Those days are over. We have to start the long journey ahead. That was the agreement. The ships were supposed to be our last resort. We didn't give up the first time, and we are not giving up now. When the network is back online, we can provide Earth with power again. We are close, William. No, we're not. We're not close at all. If you still think we can power the entirety of Earth with the MPT, you're more delusional than I thought. We have one last hope, and it's outward. Now get ready, because we're going. I'm not leaving, Will. Not like this. I'm not asking. Get her on the ship. What? Uh, is this really... <gasps> So then, that is that, and you see that thing that's just in front of us there? That is called an ASE, or an ASE for short. So he's going to be our new little friend. So go ahead, pick him up. Your achievement should unlock right now. And I mean, damn, look at that view. Pfft. I tell you what, a lot of things go wrong in this game, but that is a view <laughs> worthy of getting uh, nearly dying for a bunch of times. So go ahead, just go to the right, follow the path again that I do through the double doors right here and I tell you what the the guys and gals who made this game made it look absolutely stunning the visuals on the inside and the visual on the visuals on the outside as well on the moon and everything are absolutely perfect so place your new little assy guy and we've got to collect these three uh, little parts basically to clip him in we need to start powering him up now because he is broken he is asinine and messed up so the second one is to the right of him so just go ahead, it, it doesn't do anything, there's no point reading it, you can just collect it. There is a little magazine that you can inspect and read. Again, it's not one of those that count towards uh, an achievement, but it is just there if you wanted to uh, pick it up and take a little look. 
otherwise from that magazine it's just by the stairs there on the room on the left and that's where the third part is and now what we've got to do is like again a, a sort of similar slight very small puzzle we've just got to put place the pieces into ass mm -hmm. that sounds pretty wrong actually but hey i mean the the ase so you've just got to um click the correct item put them in as it's shown it is pretty easy again to be honest to move them around you've just got to press the uh left and uh right press the left joystick left and right obviously and then obviously if you want to turn them around the other way just press the uh, right bumper and left bumper I hope that made sense because I think I just confused myself there I'm sorry So that's the first bit done. We're not quite done with him yet, but we can now go into the back room. And again, there's a few little items that you can inspect if you want to. You've got this little globe right here. Yeah, and these ones are not for any particular achievement, but what we're doing is grabbing... There's an iPad with emails on the left back corner, and right next to it are the next bunch of items that we need to be able to fix up our ass. Our ass is flat, our ass is broken, and we need to fix them up, and that is exactly what you need. But just over here then you can find a drawing, again, by me, the Welsh Hunter, age 30. <laughs> I'm such a good drawer. No, but this is actually a cute little drawing. And then you can just uh, have a little read of this if you want to. It's there if you want to. But if not, we'll just go back to our assy now. There's no uh, achievement sort of collectibles. Nothing to scan, no audio or anything at the moment. So we'll go back to our assy. And this puzzle is... It's a little bit slightly more complicated. Mainly because you've got to choose the correct bits. But again, you're following me. So you shouldn't have too much of a problem, I hope. Woohoo! We've got our ass up and running. I'm going to call him an ass because it's a little bit more hilarious. Go down to the screen, press the A button, and that will wake our little friend up. We now have an ass. Go ahead, go to him, inspect him, and this is where we get another achievement called the Mechanic as well. Oh, our ass has a little uh, a little brown hole as well. There we go. Oh, it's turned blue. Oof, should see a doctor about that, Frel. So our ass isn't all useless, he will come very much in handy, very much unlike quite a lot of AI in other games. Let's go to this little black box here, 
Now, if you press the Y button, you turn into an ass. You turn into the ass. And he's basically the only one that can fit through a hole. So we're doing a bit of anal right here. Ah, I gotta stop. Um, <laughs> we're doing a bit of... Uh, a bit of pipe. Pipe bustling through. Uh, it can be quite disorientating. You can sort of go upside down and to the left and it might uh, mess you up a bit. But again, the buttons are exactly the same. Press A to go up, B to go down. Um, click in the right stick if you want to turn the torch on or off. Move with the left stick. It's all fair, uh, relatively simple. But there's only one path to take at the minute. And now we are out of it. And what we can also do, you see this little yellow switch here? Press X by that and he basically unlocks doors for us. And then just to the left and up, there is another one for us to unlock as well. So he comes in and he does our ass. So then, from our position, a new hologram has just appeared in the back room where we got the other part, so uh, a little bit earlier on, so just go ahead and then click X to watch. This is Isaac. Hi. I'm not sure if this message will ever reach you. I, uh, I don't think it will. But I'm trying anyway. We haven't spoken since the argument about Kathy. I want you to know that she's safe and well. This message will be the last you'll ever get from me or from anyone else up here. It's probably something you'll never understand. <laughs> Hell, I barely do. If someone ever finds out what happened here, know that I did it for her, for your sister. To give her a chance. <laughs> but you'll do great. <clears throat> you'll do great things. Take care. And, uh, I love you. I wish I said that more often. <laughs> Back when you still called me dad. Goodbye. Hmm, some stressful times going on right here. So from the hologram then, go directly underneath the stairs and there will be another scannable item for us to, well, scan. So that's another collectible done. Um, go ahead, tell your little assy friend to unlock the door for us. He's a little cutie though, isn't he? A little asinine. Ooh, little asinine, that's a good, uh, that's a good, good name. But we've got another bit of audio again. Exactly, basically unmissable. Alex, scan for data. Uh, and then from here, where we're going, we'll go to the left, and you're sort of going through a little canteen area. And right at the very end, there is a high gen or hui gen, or whatever you want to call it. But that's another big memorial scannable statue. Alex, project hologram from September 23rd, 2054. This isn't just the Moon-Up crew. There's too many of them. These are Tombow evacuees. Again, the other little collectible on it is not needed, but it's there if you want to take a look. But we've seen one earlier on in the very first chapter. So from this canteen area, go to the left. Uh, get your torch on. It can be a bit dark. And you see where this sign is? The Pearson 2035 sign. We need to go up these stairs now, and there is a hologram for us to watch. Right now, so you can go ahead and enjoy this one. Hold up. Do you see the people down there? They will be the start of a new chapter. Together, we will be humanity's future. At what cost, William? We're saving the species so we can start again. If this is what it takes for humanity to survive, I'll gladly take responsibility. There you are, Johansson. Without your help, this wouldn't have been possible. Isaac? This was not the agreement, you know that. We need to get the MPT back online. Be realistic, Rosa. 
Even if we ever manage to provide Earth with all the power it needs, what do we truly gain? More time to see oceans and deserts taking our homes. William, I've done my part. Let's just go. I'm done with this mess. You heard the man? Let's go. Our work begins. So directly from where you start, or you just go back down the stairs, which are on the right-hand side there. I had to edit it out because I got <laughs> somehow much to get lost. Go to the left and then go to the console right here, and then we'll just press the A button and wait for it to do its thing. So that's perfect then, so that's something else which hasn't gone smooth for us. Everything, it, it, it's either offline or very low. So uh, just head to this little maintenance bit here, get the canister out of that, and then go ahead and put it into the crew quarters one. It'll say, it'll have it all anyway, it'll all be um, marked up with crew quarters because we need to grab another canister. Why there's not just an array of canisters for us to choose from anyway is beyond me, but there we go, I'm not. I'm, I'm not, I never have been an astronaut, so there we go. So if you go to the right, you can see this computer chair for us to uh, scan. And now we will be getting our third Moon Man comic from the door on the very right uh, in C3 right here. It's directly in front of you on the table. Moon Man, that's number three out of six. That's job done for us there. So then, now I do go into C2 and B1 right here. There's no achievement related collectibles. This um, man who looks like he's talking to his own penis. <laughs> Obviously, that is not a an achievement related collectible. That's just something to do with the story, as it is in B1 as well. So again, completely up to you if you want to do that or if you just want to skip ahead. Uh, because we are picking up another audio and another scan and going for quite a tricky-ish achievement in the not too distant future in about five minutes so here we go then from b1 there's nothing else here to collect i thought there was a, a scannable item in here which there clearly isn't so i have to do double the reading but if you just keep following around now just at the very end of this hallway you can see already see the uh, bit of audio right there oh sorry i do go into a3 and have a look in the empty cupboard or the empty locker which has absolutely nothing in it so Apologies for just wasting your time there, but <laughs> grab the audio first. Come in, Rolf. I'm at the quarters. Do you read me? And then once you are out of here, if you just go directly down, you'll be able to scan a couple of these beds on the floor, which will be uh, the bunk beds. We also get another achievement unlocked for us there as well, environmental analysis, which is just brilliant. And... Now, so basically, we are being told we need to get out of there now before we die, but this bit is potentially quite tricky. So there's um, a machine in the middle of the room that ca that will shock you. So it's 2032 to get in here, Now I have to be very careful. Now, what I advise is wait until the machine's laser goes completely down, stay to the inside as much as you can, back yourself up, so when you press LT to sprint, you have a bit of a head start. Now, hopefully with that, you can just blitz this part. So make sure the lasers are down, back up, and then LT to sprint. Because if you're sort of too close to it, you don't get enough of, enough momentum, and you actually get shocked at the very, very end. So there you go. So hopefully with that, you can just blitz that part. It was a bit of a pain in the ass for me, to be honest. I tried, uh, I did try different ways to do it, but backing up and getting yourself a sprinting head start worked wonders for me. So there you go, with that then, achievement unlocks, and now we can grab the canister and move ahead. Now we can go to the vehicle bay and land on Le Moon. Ooh. 
Oop, almost messed it up. Don't go through the single door, go left through the double doors right here. And now we have finally got this canister. Thank God, hopefully that last achievement didn't cause you too many issues. But now we can, like I said, go through the vehicle bay. So of course, uh, put the canister in the empty one that says vehicle bay one. Then go and grab the other canister from the crew quarters, put that into the second one. And we are golden. We're going for a drive on the moon. And for another couple of achievements as well. Online. So then, the only thing that we need to do in here is go to the left, get in the rover, big boy. And it's just like any sort of drive-in part in any game really so it's uh, right trigger to drive uh, left trigger to brake uh, B handbrake left joystick to steer you know the usual but you see the three lights on the doors we've basically got to get the rover on the three the three different pads that are on the floor to get the lights to light up which will enable the doors to open and then we can nip on out now very important this bit you will basically be spending at least 30 minutes outside to get another achievement called Stargazer. Now, you can't just go back and come come back in and go back out. You have to do it all at once. So as soon as you're outside here, have a look at the time, and then you'll just have to go from half hour from there. But we've got another achievement to get first anyway. So just follow the monorail rail on the left-hand side. The one on the left, and you'll see, and this is a big one for all them conspiracy, Conspiracy theorists nuts out there. <laughs> this is a big one. So you see just off in the distance like a little little bit of a wall or something right here. And what it is, oh it's a studio set. And it comes with a director's chair and everything. So get out of the vehicle by pressing the X button. Uh, you'll enter, always enter it from the rear of the vehicle. Have a little look around. So you got lights, you got camera, you got action, you got director's chair. So for all you conspiracy theorists out there, that is a goddamn big one. Was it faked or was it real? It was real, and if you don't believe it, you're friggin' nuts. But hey, I respect all your opinions anyway. Uh, so anyway, as soon as that unlocks, like I said, there's literally no rush because you've basically now got another 30 minutes of just driving around or going down, getting yourself a drink, making yourself a sandwich. But there is another little Easter egg uh, for us to find, and it is from 2001, A Space Odyssey. Now, if you've seen it, you'll know exactly what it is, and it's around here somewhere. It's just to the a little bit to the left of the uh, director's moon set. It's right here somewhere. Here it is. Here it is. Look. So if you've seen 2001 A Space Odyssey, you'll know exactly what that is. And I think that's another little clever Easter egg they've put in this game. But that's it. That's all you've got to do for the minute. So you literally, like I said, might as well just take a step back. I'm obviously not going to be uh, showing you the full half an hour. Uh, by the way, if your controller vibrates, you can actually press the Xbox button in the middle of the controller. And that will stop the vibration, but that will keep the timer going. Uh, the controller didn't vib vibrate personally for me all the way through. But if it does for you and it can drive you mad, there you go. That's a little trick for you to do that. Otherwise, like I said, go make a sandwich. Go make a cup of brewski. And just have a little wait until it unlocks. It should unlock. Eventually, it'll sort of unlock for me. I sort of uh, put it as about a minute or so. See me driving around and it should unlock. Now ish. Some point. There it is, look. So yeah. So Stargazer, make sure to get this achievement right now before you actually move on. And then once that is unlocked, now we can go and do what we need to do. Which involves um, going to two. Basically, we've got to go to two stations right here, uh, and they're both marked, so you can't miss them. Both marked with like a little blue uh, rectangle, or square, diamond, whatever. And just like as we uh, came outside, there's little pads on the floor, so make sure to line them up properly. Get all 
six lights working and now we've got three minutes of oxygen basically we need to climb this tower it's not too difficult at all really uh, press the button as soon as we are obviously inside your oxygen will return so it's not not too bad at all in all fairness now we need to use our little asinine friend right here he's going to open up the door for us spank you very much me ass and then just climb the ladder and there's not really much to do apart from climb 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 by the way don't get confused what i did the stairs are directly to your left so put your tor torch on go to the left i literally couldn't see until i put the torch on funny that otherwise it's a straight shoot all the way up And once you're up here then, interact with this sort of space chair right here. And what we'll be doing now is lining up the uh, MPT. You've, you've probably seen it quite a lot. The MPT transmitters are offline. So this is our job now. Um, so once you're on then, just go all the way to the... Well, it's either the right or left. It's, it's slow moving as it you'd have probably expected to be until you see a little target and you've got to basically if you remember when we docked the spaceship you've just got to hit, um, make sure that's bang on press the X button and the rest gets it done for you so we'll be doing that here and we'll be going to the next uh, sort of tower, tower little station and doing the exact same thing there I think they should have put a radio in this anyway. Either some space songs or because it's so bumpy. You know when you're sort of going off-roading in America or somewhere? Should have put some real banging off-roading music on. But hey, that's just <laughs> that's just my opinion. So then we're doing the exact same thing as we've done on the last tower then we're just getting to the MP trans uh, MPT transmitter and then lining up the shot 
perfectly. And then when we do that, we can finally head back to home base. So I'll tell you what, I pretty feel, I, I really, really did enjoy this section. I thought it was so nice, relaxing, but it was so... Just to see the visuals of it and the, and the graphics, I thought, were absolutely unbelievable. So the, this is a part of the, the game I really, really enjoyed. We're here, finally. So we've made it. So some actual finally good news. Um, for some reason, because we keep exiting out the rear of the vehicle, I keep getting confused as to where the hell I am now. Um, but we finally found our way then. So what we're doing is just going back to the sort of central command, or the central bit of desk area right in front of us, turning on them MP tra uh, MPT transmitters. Something finally went right for us in outer space. Nothing's trying to kill us. Nothing's trying to, you know... Whatever, something actually went right for us. By the way, as soon as you do this bit, directly in front of you, there was going, or us even, there is going to be another hologram. So make sure to click on that before we leave. Turn back 
and confine ourselves to a dying planet. Or we can look outward. Now is the time to act. Make your decision, and make it now. A new beginning dawns for humanity, and it dawns today. So we are coming up to the end of chapter 3 now, so just follow the path that I take and we'll actually be um, getting another um, hologram now. So it's just down the um, vehicle bay again, as we've just seen, so we're going back there. Sadly, I don't think we're going back outside this time, but we're just going directly to the right up the stairs and watch the next hologram before we take the monorail. Monorail. And I'm thinking of the Simpsons episode there. Monorail! Penny? Look, we don't call the shots here, okay? Now help me out with this stuff. Put that down, Frank. Don't you know what helium is for? Don't you think it's strange it's here instead of next to the reactor it's supposed to power? Of course I do, it's just... Just what? Should we accept everything they say? Do you even realize what the consequences are if we leave while the MPT is offline? What choice do we have? What do we really have to go back to? Floods, dust storms, blazing heat? I'm done. The council's giving us a second chance, and I'm not wasting it. Now, I'm done talking. Just give me a hand. Give and that's it, then. So all we've got to do, go into the open door, go to the front, which is on your left, as you see. Press X to interact, and we are done. So enjoy the next little bit of cutscene. Enjoy the ride. And again, if you remember the Simpsons monorail song from uh, whatever season it was, you have a good sing song of that as well. Because I did. <laughs> this is Sarah Baker, lead engineer at Pearson Space Station. I was sent to investigate the blackout together with station mechanic Rolf Robertson. I was attacked by an AZ unit and lost consciousness. The reasons for this attack remain unclear. It seems my expedition partner has left. And I am unable to contact Pearson Space Station or any of the other facilities. I'm going to cross the frontier now, passing Copernicus Outpost 1, to get to Tombo and try to figure out what caused the MPT failure. Whoever finds this, please try to contact me. Alex? and recording. So welcome to chapter 4 then, the Copernicus Outpost 1. This, uh, now chapter 3 did have quite a lot of collectibles and it was a sort of a long chapter. This one is a little bit shorter. Just go to the left, as soon as you get out of the monorail, there is, um, that's our main objective. We need to find the code to be able to get into the door, which was to the right of the um, monorail. So we know who has the code, so now we've got to go and get that. There is a little magazine for us to collect on the table and have a read. Bit of space tech. I mean, you're already in space. Wouldn't you want, like, Earth tech magazine? See what's going down on Earth? But, well, you know, up to you, in it. <laughs> up to them. Anyway, down the stairs, we are watching yet another hologram. Enjoy. This is an evacuation. The reactor at Tombo has suffered a critical malfunction. We're here to evacuate you to Copernicus Moon Hub. Whoa, calm down. Who sent you? We're here on official orders of the Lunar Council. The Lunar Council? Frank, do you see anything strange happening across the MPT network? Mm, I've got nothing out of the ordinary. Tombo seems fine to me. Perhaps you could explain a bit more first. This is for your own safety. The situation will be explained by the Council when all colonists arrive at Moon Hub. So, MacArthur calls the shots now, huh? We don't have time for this. Just take them. What? Get your hands off me! Evacuation crew to MacArthur. We're progressing to stage two. Outpost crew and the package are on their way to Moon Hub. We didn't receive any word from the others at Reinhold, though. Good work, Evac. Wait for them to pass Outpost 1. Contact me again when the second evacuation crew arrives. Over and out. 
Right then, so now things are starting to get a little bit more serious and we're starting to have a little bit of an understanding about what went on, so go around the only obvious path to get another bit of audio for us. Sarah Baker again. I travelled to this outpost from Moonhub. Where I was sent to investigate the black so once you've back out of the main menu then, go down the ladder and then from this ladder we're going to take a direct right because there's another scannable item for us to, well, you know, scan. Uh, it's a tyre, which is always worth, you know, scanning just in case. But it all adds up to it, it all ties the story nicely together. So, and we get a lot of collectibles smashed into our face in this chapter which is nice now you can see just up above where you scan that tire that is our ob next objective but we're a bit too far away so we need to grab a ladder from just over there and uh, we won't be climbing it fully we'll be using our laser to cut open the locks and using our asinine friend to get through it's all pretty self-explanatory i think So press Y to get your asinine friend out, and we're going back through the yellow anal tube loom of life. And this one, actually, you got to be careful. Well, not too careful where you're going, but if you do go somewhere else, you just get blocked off, so you'll have to go the opposite way. So it's not too bad, really. Really. So it's a right there and it's another right here and we are out. Now basically just stay in this room, go ahead, I've had to edit this little bit out here, so go ahead, get um, unlock the door, do not go through where I went though, um, basically I just turned around, you stay in this same room and go over to the right hand side of the door and that is where you see the code. If you go into the next room there's literally nothing in it and I wasted about 5 minutes. Just roaming around wondering what the hell I was doing. So if you do get confused with that bit, I literally just unlocked the door and then turned around. I stayed in that room. Okay, I'm, I, <laughs> I hope that explanation was a lot better than seeing what I just did then. So going back the way we came, but before you go to the right and up the stairs, go to this door directly in front of you here. 1881, of course, is the code. We'll be going into the doctor's office. And there is an iPad on the left with a couple of emails on it if you want to read them. But the most important thing is our fourth Moon Man comic book, which is directly behind this iPad. And it's just sitting on a shelf waiting to be uh, collected. So you, you literally only need to read that once, even if you want to. Um, <laughs> but you obviously don't have to. We already know the code there, but we'll collect it anyway. There's your fourth Moon Man comic book. And that should be it for the doctor's room. So now we can go out, go back up to the stairs, and now we can move forward. Um, go to the left, there he is, the keypad, 1881. And then it's the locked door that was on the right, it'll be on the left of us now. To the right of the monorail, that is now where we can get open. At least there's some more good news, we can continue pushing forward. But there is another scannable item right here, a bunch of oxygen bottles, or helium bottles, sorry. Helium minus three is the correct word for it. And there is, you can toggle, you can switch between astronaut suits if you want, which I thought was very interesting. But here is yet another hologram. Really enjoying these holograms, to helium be honest. package and Copernicus outpost one personnel have arrived in Moonhub, sir. Evac crew 2 is still nowhere in sight though. We've been trying to reach them but we're getting no response at all. How should we proceed? Seal the door and make your way to Muna. Fuel needs to be in place before we arrive with the Tomboy evacuees. Sir, the other crew won't make it in time if I do that. They'll miss the launch. They know what they signed up for. Seal the door, now. Yes sir. So next up, we'll have to be using our little asinine friend once again then. He's 
uh, we can't actually go through the airlock yet. So get him outside and there's going to be like a sort of small, again, another small puzzle. You just have to click the correct um, switches. So it's number two once, number three once, and then number four twice. I'm 100% I'm sure that it'll be the same for absolutely everyone in every game. So it's the second one once, third one once, and the fourth one twice. And then that should allow us to be able to come outside. There we go, all good, press the button. We've only got three minutes of oxygen, but the only reason we're coming out, go directly to the left, and then up the steps, behind these uh, little lights and switches, there's just a scannable item for us. It's the only reason we're coming outside. There's nothing else to do here. You can have a look at the pretty uh, sights and everything if you really want to, but that was the main objective, so... Um, yeah, yeah, so that's it. Enjoy it. <laughs> but now we can go back anyway, so... So that's it then for this chapter. I think we are basically absolutely done now. So we're just going back to where the monorail is. Go back to the very beginning, go to the right hand side of it, and then just be on our way again. Only this time we'll get an achievement, of course, for doing what we did in this chapter. But this time there's going to be a little bit of... But it's going to be just a, a very, very small, quick time event. Uh, which will be coming up very shortly. So here it is then, This um, there's only three buttons to push. The first one, you'll have to push the left trigger. As soon as you see it, it'll be coming up, there'll be a door in front of us, we need to push the left trigger. So get your finger on the left trigger ready. On arrival in Rhino Crater Base. As soon as you see the warning on your dashboard, now. Get your left trigger finger ready. Now, now, now and we'll just about avoid that. Next one is the right trigger, so get your finger on the right trigger next. Again, wait for the warning on your dashboard. And now. So there we go then, and the last one, as soon as you get outside, it'll just be pressing the X button, and that's it for the quick time event. And then you just enjoy the rest of the cutscene. So here we are then, chapter 5 out of chapter 6, and we start off with stun, a, a bit of oxygen depletion. So if you want to, um, you can just open up this box here. There's no point picking this bit of oxygen up yet because we only just started. But if you go behind yourself and go directly in front of you, there is another scannable item that we can, well, <laughs> scan, obviously. And that is for uh, the worn astronaut suit. So, uh, just from the left of the astronaut suit, then, this part is, well, it's not finicky, it's all part of the game where you're sort of in, well, obviously deep space, it's sort of kind of difficult to control or difficult to stop, uh, you're, you're sort of floating a little bit as well, which is always brilliant, but climb up the ladder here, and now we are going to be coming up to an achievement, which takes around 10 15 minutes kind of like the computer chair from earlier on except we've got to carry this <laughs> carry this little dead cell or dead helium canister or whatever it is for a little while so go ahead cut all these locks off so we can get down but there we go so take this is the dead cell that we need to take with us to the outside so make sure to keep that at all time 
there's a brand new one that you can pop in just to the left of it there as you can see and if you're feeling a bit um, oxy deoxygenated uh, just have a look in these sort of cabinets here there's a couple that you can there's a couple on this one a couple on the right one so you should be good to go again always remember to take this canister with you or sell or whatever you want pop it down again we've got now we can use our little asinine friend so go back on yourself and we're basically going up the same ladder that we just came up eventually we'll get there and then obviously there's the only yellow switch use that and that destroys the power letting us get through so again pick up the uh, canister pop them down here the button doesn't actually work you have to again go to your little asinine friend and basically click the switch again that will knock the power back on for us and then we can finally get through so we don't have to worry about you know not dying through lack of oxygen pick up the big canister boy again we're just taking him for a little stroll through the space station so we've got a couple of collectibles we've got a moon man comic book here a few scannable items uh well one scannable item and a hologram i pick up this first for well you know for story relations but this one doesn't actually count towards anything so you can pop that back down whenever you'd like thank you sarah and obviously directly to the left of it as you can see is the scannable item that's all good looks like they all had a good time before they all pissed off and just down in between these lockers then is the fifth out of six moon man comics so very important to pick this one up again remember there's always chapter select at the end of the game if you do miss anything but <clears throat> better to get it now and then back up the stairs to the right as you can see just go ahead and enjoy the hologram any word from evac crew one or macarthur Nothing. Communication's dead. What the hell is going on? What, what the All power in the tracks is off as well. I don't know. Let's be quick. We have to get to Moon Hub with that helium before MacArthur and the evacuees arrive. We'll split up. You get a report on the tracks and look for a way to repower the monorail platforms. I'll find the operator to board the train for evac. Let's go. Wait up. There he is. We do at your sixth control center. I have eyes on him. Go check on the train. I'll take care of this. There we go then, job done kid, another successful hologram looked at and hopefully you're starting to get a picture of just exactly what happened all those years ago. So again, obviously pick up the canister, there's only one way to go at the moment. Um, pop your canister anywhere you'd like for now, I <laughs> accidentally kick it over here so it's all good. Scannable whiteboard here, make sure to pick that one up and watch the next hologram. Tasty stuff. A malfunction has occurred at the Tombow facility. We're here to evacuate you to Copernicus Moon Hub. Train got stranded at the station, though. How can we get the tracks powered again? We're in a rush. Why are you here? Have you been watching me with that thing? Are you going to the domes? At Huygens? Everyone Colonists, we're here for your safety. Planning. Official orders of the Lunar Council. Especially the Council. Hey, come in. I've got bad news. We're not going to get a run-in. Any luck up there? No, just a nut job. Quit the riddles, old man. How can we get to Moonhop ASAP? If the trains are out, you have to take the Beatles. They'll carry you across. If you get out of the crater at all, of course. The sands are rough out here. Broke a lot of beetle legs trying to cross those. But there's a path. There used to be one. I know it. Driven it many times. The rovers. Get back inside. I found something. Bring the package. I tell you what, it's something I again really, really enjoying about this game is. It really does get you extremely invested in the hook, the complete story with the, with the audios that you've got to pick up, the holograms that you've got to watch. Um, by the way, there's nothing of note on these chalkboards. Again, they're just story-related sort of uh, things to pick up and read and have a look at. But yeah, the, the hologram, this is definitely, I can't remember the last game that I really, really got invested in a story like this. 
So anyway, go to the back of the sort of control center here and just press A so we can diagnose a few things. We'll be going uh, down directly in front of us in just a moment. Happy days then. So that sorted itself out. Remember again to grab the canister just before you remember where you grabbed it, of course. But remember to pick it up again. We're taking him on a nice little stroll. And it's not the way you came, it's just past the right, past the hologram. Ah, just push the button. Now, of course, we'll start losing a little bit of oxygen. We've got three minutes to do what we've got to do. But there is a hologram down here which will take up a little bit of time as well. So. What you have to do then, uh, put this, you see we're coming up to this sort of hole right here, put it, I normally drop it down the hole, sort of in the middle, so I just find it, it's a bit easier to see when we do go down on the moon there. Go to the right, watch the hologram, job done. One come in. We need to transport the helium to moon hop by rover, since we're not going to get the train running before the MPT shuts down. Evac 1, come in, do you copy? Damn it. <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> For the first time, I know everything. No more secrets. And all it took was one little switch. That was it all along. Don't mind him. Let's get out of here. I just had to see. See what you were up to. And, and now I know. Just for the fuel. Helium-3. The ticket out of here. You stranded up here? Just leave him. He's not worth it. We've got to go. <laughs> Simply a flake of the switch, and you did the rest. You have no idea what you've got yourself mixed up in, and what you've put at risk. ASEL 30. Don't. Activate crowd control protocol. No! So that's the hologram over, and as you can see, it's cost us a little bit of oxygen. We've only got 1 minute and 20 seconds left now, but we can just jump into our big boy moon rover right here, and obviously that stops, so it's all good. Now, you sort of... I, I, I'm not sure how I've done this. I sort of... You're on the right-hand side, as you can see, and I sort of just drove it... I think you just got to get as close to the edge as you can, and then the crane automatically does it for you. That's what I'm pretty sure it does, so... You know, just try and drive to the exit there. But now, we are on the ground, and no point moving forward yet. Do not move forward. Um, go ahead and reverse back. So, I almost made the mistake, because obviously we need to pick up the canister again. So, try and get sort of as close as you can to the canister. You see, I uh, that's why I put it in the middle, so you can see a lot more sort of where it is. And now we've got three minutes then to get the canister down to the first tower and run back up before we run out. Three minutes should be plenty of time though. Just as long as you know where the canister is so you can prick it up. Uh, pick, prick it up. Pick it up pretty much immediately. So, yeah, obviously the closest tower is the one directly in front of us. So just run there first. Run, rabbit, run! And for now, just put him sort of anywhere on the pad. Um, I put him just basically on the right-hand side so we can find it a little bit later on. Run back to your rover again. Run. Run, I say. But yes, yeah, so we'll be going to the second tower now, doing what we got to do there. And that is where the uh, real fun begins. Sort of.
So then, of course, this is important. Now, not this bit, for the, but for the next time. You've got to try and hit the three pads as quick as you can. Not on this tower. This tower is fine. But the next one, you've got to try and hit them three pads as quick as you can. And you will see why. So this is just like the first, uh, the, well, the first two towers we've done when we opened up the MPT transmitters. So we'll be uh, just climbing a tower. There's nothing really of note to do. We've got to use your little asinine friend in here. Um... Just to get through because the door's locked. Otherwise, we're just climbing up to the tower and going up to a laser pointer up on top. <laughs> Tense though, isn't it? So yeah, that was a nice little stroll. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, again, for the second tower, it's important to know where exactly you're hitting it. So, obviously, interact with the screen when we get there. And I only say that because after we do this, we are getting time to do three minutes. Uh, but yeah, sorry, about... Th th yeah, so th we'll get timed three minutes to complete it. But this is, of course, so you see, it's not the first one on the right there. It's the little, tiny little tower, which is just in sort of sight of the light there. So don't make that mistake, just in case. But, so this bit's fine, all we have to do. But that is the next target we've got to hit when we get to the second tower. Now remember that one, because like I said, we get timed on this bit. And this includes pissing about with the um, canister that we've been carrying around for a while. So here we go then, no time to waste, get on it, get straight, straight back in your moon rover, and <laughs> try not to drive forward. Now three minutes is a pretty decent amount of time, you can make one sort of big mistake, but then you've got to rush, so you can make sort of one, two potentially small mistakes. Now again, this first bit, so go aim straight for the tower. Try and drive more towards the right hand side so you can straighten the moon rover in a little bit more. I get it too much to the side, so I gotta piss about with um, reversing and and I in fact I even accidentally exit the vehicle when I didn't actually mean to, so I accidentally pressed X. So yeah, if you get more towards the right hand side and then you can drive and just sort of straighten it in as quick as you can. As soon as we get out, there we go. So I've hit that now. As soon as we get out, grab the canister and Put it behind the vehicle. This bit is very, very important. Grab the canister and make sure to put it behind the vehicle. If you put it anywhere else, what happens is basically the tower will collapse, but it will miss. So you've got to put it directly behind your vehicle. So now we can forget about the tower. That can go and suck a ball sack or something. So as you can see, I'm not very um, perfect with this run. Accidentally just missed the button there, but now we can run. So this is what we've been doing. So climb, but obviously it's it's not going to be a simple climb this time. We'll have to do a little bit of jumping. By the way, you need to press A to jump, which I forget to do on this first bit. So I climb the stairs here, eventually. And the stairs were collapsed right about now, so press A at that point. I was thinking about um, quitting and restarting, but I thought, screw it, we'll just leave it in. So, and you can see how long that little bit took me. So I've already made two little mistakes and basically three big mistakes. Don't worry about the electric if it gets you there. So remember, just wait to sort of jump 
sort of at the last minute, take your time here because he can fall off this as well. You don't want to be doing that, messing it up and starting again. So just again, keep your finger on the sprint button. Press A when you can. And again, like I said, you see me make a couple of mistakes, but I do actually only do this with two seconds left. So you can do it, but, you know, you may just crap your pants. So here we go then. This is this is what you need. This is the seat. And again, I don't do it straight away. It's not perfect. But remember the target you're aiming for. It's that small little tower that we did earlier on. So as soon as we're on it, swivel it to the right and just keep spamming the X button. Because as soon as you hit the target... If you keep spamming the X button, it'll just do it automatically. So as you can see there... Oh, man. Just make it. Just make it. So again, I do make a few mistakes, but obviously it would be better if you sort of didn't. Just to give yourself a little bit of no brown pants time and a little bit of breathing space. Now, if you've done everything that you did, that I did with the canister, you will unlock two achievements here. The one for uh, just basically... Um, Sort of completing chapter 5, I think it's for completing chapter 5. But actually, whatever that story related achievement was, sorry. And you, and then you get the one for bringing the canister along with the ride with you. But again, as you can see, the tower collapses. If you leave that anywhere else, it won't actually do it. So leaving it behind the vehicle was important, but you get that achievement there. Potentially a little bit of a pain in the ass achievement, but not too bad really. So hopefully you will have a bit of a smoother run than I did with that. And the fun's not even over yet. Remember when we had to pick up the oxygen when we were flying through space? We've got to do this one again. This may be a little bit hard to see, but you can just about see the um, little oxygen canisters on the, the ground. They've got a little red, uh, red tint and glow to them, as you can see. So just keep following the sort of straight path that I do. You, it's pretty obvious when you're sort of picking one up. And then we're just getting back to the main area. As soon as we do that, we should be good to go. Nice uh, nice little oxygen canister in here for us to pick up, so make sure to do that. You can't actually go through. So sprint as much as you can. Push that look. Oof, look at that. Three sec three seconds left. Oof, boy. I tell you, this is starting to get a little bit tense. Nearly dying all the time. Oh, man. Why can't space just be easy, eh? Anyway, once we are here then, now we can just go back up into the lift. Chapter 5 is almost coming to an end. So we've only got one more chapter to do after this, and there'll be a lot of achievements unlocking for us thanks to getting all the collectibles. Well, let's just fly on. You know, when I'm look when I'm not looking at the right door, of course, <laughs> that always helps. And now we've we've got three minutes. But all we're doing: go to the right, go straight up the stairs, go into the airlock, push the button. You know that that shouldn't even be a worry again this time. And there we go then. So that, that bit of fun is all over now, finally. Go back up to the console, press the A button, and happy days. They evacuated? No, 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 this can't be right. They can't just leave. The colony will fail without them. And Earth. How could they all be so goddamn selfish? What were they thinking? How can they be so... Warning. Tombo reactor failing. Outward protocol in effect. Evacuate all facilities. Yes, I know they evacuated. I know! I know I'm alone. Combo reactor capacity at 10%. It's still going? Alex, we have to go. This is... this would make things right. We could fix this. 
We can fix this. Okay. Just follow the tracks along the pillars. You'll make it to Tombo. You'll make it, Sarah. Sarah, I'll find you. Vessel Commander, Rosa Lavard, requesting immediate assistance. Location, group the invite Delta. Mayday. Mayday. Control to Fortuna One. I'm not sure if you're still there. The dust storms, they've gotten worse. Everything has. The solution has to be a tombo. Whether it's the reactor or the MPT transmitter itself, I can't tell. But we're at the end of the line, Wolf. We could use some good news down here. I wish I, I could I wish I could help you. then basically as you can see the last hologram would have been automatically done they all up and left leaving Sarah to fend for, for herself basically so as you can imagine she got a little pissed off with that which hey you know our friends leave us in the club all the time and you sort of go eh, whatever but <laughs> leaving you in space is a bit of a dick move really isn't it but anyway this is chapter six welcome to Tom Bo I wonder if there's an actual guy called Tom Bo um, anyway, look up into the left, as you can see, this is how we unlock everything, but now our oxygen is depleting. But again, it's not too bad, we've got plenty of oxygen refill tanks to sort of get our mouths over and things. So, jump down straight away first, then go to the right, we're going to have a big item to scan straight away. So, make sure to collect that before we move on. And obviously we're still we're not actually in anywhere, so we've got we've got a few little nice floaty jumpy boys. Now if you need a refill, there you go. We've got little refill stations conveniently and happily placed for us there. 
So, and they're unlimited. You can mess around with them and get some more oxygen anytime you like. Uh, grab this big, massive canister-looking thing, and there's a little bit of a hill, so you do have to actually push it forward. Otherwise, it won't do anything, because we need that to be able to jump over there, of course. This isn't even world's strongest astronaut strength, no. This, this is just all gravitational yum-yums. Uh, refill if you need to, but there is another refill station a little bit later on, so we had do we do actually have plenty of time. So make sure to jump, lovely. Directly to your right, there is another scannable item for us. A big looking mechanism, Gears of War 6. No, I'm just joking. But then just to the left of that, that is our next location, so nip on down there, boy. And there is a refill station just at the end here, so you might as well just uh, refill yourself in it. Refill them balls, yo. Right, once that's refilled then you'll get another save point. These save points and checkpoints are very generous in this chapter especially. Keep jumping forward. Even if you do fall down, you can get back up with no problems. Probably not on this bit though, so make sure you jump well. And to the right... Uh, just keep going straight at this point, as you can see, it's just a, like a little rock or something in front of you. And again, jump up, and up, and up. And as you can see there, you can just see Tombow Station directly in front of us on the left. I don't know what I'm waiting for, mate. Wait for a mate, mate. And again, even if you don't have enough, there's, there's still little bits of oxygen refill tanks anyway, so... Here we go, we have now finally made it to the final destination, smash the button on the airlock and we can breathe easy once again. Now, this area can be very dark in some point, so, you know, if your torch goes dim, just wait for a couple of seconds for it to refill. It's just, trust me, it's just easier to see <laughs> in the light, obviously. So keep going straight, there's only one sort of little linear path for us to go for the time being. And now we need to use our little asinine buddy to help us unlock this door on the left. Yeah, what an adventure, huh? But now we're all good, we can go through, uh, have a look on the desk. There is a little item for us to pick up and read. Not an achievement collectible, but... Worth having a read if you've been following this complete story and having a look at all types of things so far. Um, go to the right now. We need to be going to the door. Just as you can see, the only door really on the left. That opens automatically. Go to the left. Go through the big double doors. And now we will be watching a hologram just at the top of these stairs. Reactor capacity at 9%. We're close now. Let's go, Alex. Welcome to Tombo. Who are you? Sarah. Sarah Baker. Used to be stationed at Pearson. You work here? I used to. Name's Isaac. Isaac. Mr. Johansson? Where's the rest? I thought everyone had... There's no one else. Why are you here? They're all gone. I... I'm here to fix the MPT. Mm -mm. No use. They locked the mainframe. The system's inaccessible. I, I'm a software engineer. Show me. Maybe I can... Uh, what's going on? The reactor is running out of fuel, but power's still building up inside. With the MPT offline, that power can't go anywhere. If it isn't stopped soon, Wait, you're a software engineer? Come with me! Wait, hold up! So, from this point then, just go ahead, go to the right... Uh, no, yeah, right-hand side. Basically where the vendor machines are, if you do get lost right there. And it's sort of one bit of linear path to take. Uh, again, little something on this desk here. Nothing really of any note. There's only one little path that we can take for now. What we're going to do is, as you'll be able to see in just a moment, there is something for us. There's a little, uh, basically, collapsed-looking wall that we're able to smash to get through. No collectibles or anything at the moment. Here is that little collapsed wall. 
So there is uh, something we can push down the stairs, just at the top of the stairs here. So go ahead and grab that with your... Well, actually, we're back to pure astronaut. World's strongest astronaut strength now. But we'll be coming up to sort of two enemies that can shock you very quickly and very easily. So, I think you've probably just seen them. There's two little bots with red lights on them. They are the little enemies that can shock us. Um, again, pick up a little collectible if you want here. Again, no relevance though. Um, just story related. No way to go on the left. That is where we need to go to the crew quarters, but obviously we can't get that way. So, what we need to do, go behind us. There's a uh, st set of stairs for us to climb. And... Yeah, just through this door right here. Now, this is the area then. So, wait. We're going to the right first. So, of course, wait for the bot to start going up that way. There's a set of boxes on the right. Climb up there. Make sure to be pressing the left trigger while you jump in. Because if you just press the A button, you sort of jump on the spot and you mess it up. Go to the right. There's like a little uh, gap for us to get by. Directly in front of us are the boxes. So, go ahead. Climb that up. And then you should be safe from this point. But hopefully that was... Hopefully that wasn't too um, quick there, you sort of jump up on the right, you're just waiting for the enemy to go the other way and there's like a little gap we can get through there, so apologies if that was a little bit quick though. So go straight ahead into the car cargo area here, 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 for another bit of audio, and we can just go for, this is the area that's quite dark, so get your little asinine buddy out. And what looked an awful lot like body bags. What happened? Now's not the time. You knew these people. Enough! You don't know what you're talking about. No, that's right. I don't. I don't know why the MPT shut down. So then at this point, all we've been doing is basically setting ourselves up uh, for a bit of easier access. Um, so there's a, f a few sort of locked doors we need to get rid of with the golden... Um, with our little laser right here. So we need to be coming in this room. And those enemies earlier on, we're not quite done with that room. I think we've got to sort of nip through there another two times. But it is easier than the last time. So it's not too difficult really at all. But it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. But as, like I said, as long as you jump in with your sprinting, pressing LT and A, then you should be good to go. Because I was pressing just the A button. And it just wouldn't work. So go into the first room that we um, got rid of the locked door. Take out the power from the maintenance now. And then go ahead and pop it into the crew quarters so that we can finally bloody get in there. Oh yeah, I mean, by all means, if you want to uh, carry carry on finishing, listening to the rest of the audio there, you're more than welcome to do so. It's always nice, isn't it? Always nice to have something to listen to. But now we're going into the room with the couple of enemies from earlier on, so we have to nip to the right first and then directly to the left, but obviously we have to wait for the enemies to just flash on by. So as soon as he goes back to the right, which will be right about now, go ahead directly to the left, and there's a little gap right here. So we should be safe for now. Now all we've got to do is just climb on a couple of boxes here and then run to the crew quarters to get in there. But I actually end up messing this up like an absolute knob cheese. I somehow missed the box. And I, in fact, I almost get caught. So if it's a case of if you do ever get caught, just literally go for it. You can get shocked once or twice, but we are all good. So go to the right straight away. You'll see a little bit of audio. This is another sort of very dark area. Can be a bit of a pain in the ass. So, yep. Again, if your torch does run out, you know, just wait for a couple of seconds for it to refill, as I've said. 
and go straight down. There's a room on the this room on the right right here does have uh, a collectible which you can read, but the mo most important one is this door on the left right here, and it has the final Moon Man comic. It's the last door on the left of this little hallway, and that is six out of six Moon Man comics complete and done. You should get the achievement right now, and that is perfect. So now we've also got a code with that, so you don't have to worry about Moon Man comics anymore. Wish you could have actually read them in real life. So it's the last door on the left. Uh, now going to the last door on the right, which is opposite, and there is a white, a scannable whiteboard. There's an Easter egg. If you want to get your little asinine friend to go behind the whiteboard, there's a little Easter egg. Um, I didn't look at it, so I don't know what it is. Sorry. <laughs> but now we can move on. Got the Moon Man. Got the uh, scannable item. Where you needed to go actually was not down here. Sorry, I it was kind of hard to tell, but we need to use our asinine friend, and he's just down the corridor to our left right now. And you can just see the pipe sticking down there. Kind of hard to see in the dark, which is why I went straight on. But use him just to nip to the other side. Freeze this up a bit, go straight ahead to storage, type in 8662, that is the code that we found earlier on, and there's another piece of audio for us to listen to right here. Now, you know, nip onto that when you've got two seconds. And then we'll have to grab this, we'll be taking this for a little walk now, like a, like a dog, but like a really big fat dog, so just... Push him through, keep pushing him through every doorway that you can until we get to the locked door at the end. Error. It's... it's a wasteland already. Look, I know. We messed up. For centuries. But the MPT can buy us the time we need to make it right again. I'd like to believe that. So go ahead then, just leave that for now, and you can't actually get through maintenance, so what we need to do is go back into the room from earlier on, to get the canister from the crew quarters back into the maintenance so we can go through so which means we're going back through this little area with the enemies but what we can do here is just climb the boxes directly in front of us obviously be wary of the enemies they can shock you very quickly and you see the same boxes that we've climbed up to to get to the crew quarters so climb onto the boxes there you go be very careful though but this time we're going directly ahead and I got lucky with that. I thought I could jump over them, but there's actually the gap that you've got to go through. So, again, just make sure that the enemy's, you know, way out of sight before you try that one. So, we can now go back into the little maintenance hatch. And now we can transfer, like I said, the canister from crew quarters back to maintenance to get through there. Tell you what, again, where the hell are all the canisters? I know I'm the only one on the space station and everything, but where the bloody hell are all the canisters? Surely you'd have enough... To <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, no point complaining. We're all good now. So we go through the door, and now we can push our big fat dog crane crate sort of thing. We can push it, push it, push it, and there's a cargo lift directly on the lift. So take on the lift up, buddy. And I just realised I said push the cargo lift to the lift to grab the lift. Obviously, what I meant was push the crate to the left on the cargo lift and take it up. Obviously, I'm glad you know what I meant. Man, my, my tongue is completely twisted right now as we get towards the end of this. So what we're doing then, uh, basically again, there's another collapsed wall that we need to be getting rid of and this comes in handy. <laughs> the convenience is perfect in this game. So sort of push him there for now. Um, go to the right to the end of the bridge. You've got to get your laser out. You see the little bit of gold in the right hand top corner? Sort of golden string ready for us to break. There we go. Get close to that. That'll break that. And now we can push our big fat crate dog down it, allowing us through.
So follow old Rexy the dog there, but now we're basically, we're not done, we've still got a little bit left to do, but we're definitely done with the enemies of that little room, which is just great. So go ahead, follow the path around, there's only one path to take at the minute. So you're not, you shouldn't really get lost, I'd be surprised if you did. And f uh, watch the hologram as we get to the control center right now. We have to capacity at one percent. We have to get in now! I'm out of options! I've tried everything I know! Think! It's about to overload! Wait, didn't you say MacArthur overloaded safety limiters? Why are you talking about MacArthur? Alex, isolate encryption sequence 17B on the grid. Reactor capacity at zero. Got it! We're in! Now what? There's an emergency shutdown! Reactor deactivating. It worked! The reactor's stabilizing! We're not done yet. The reactor hasn't been able to send the energy anywhere, so... PT overloading. Relief pressure immediately. The reserves are about to burst. We have to release the energy. How? A, a temporary transmission should send the... <laughs> It's quiet. Finally. The reactor. Is it safe? It is. But the force has moved the MPT dish off its alignment. How bad is it? Can we realign it? The controls are up in the tower. But let's see if there's any helium left first. So, starting to get into the real nitty gritty. But what you gotta do, just go onto the computer monitor here and di press the diagnose button. And we wait, and we wait. Well then, isn't that just the biggest pain in the ass? So we need to get a couple of helium-3 minus canisters, so... What we need to do then is go into helium storage. I'm, for certain, I don't know what the hell I was doing then, having a bit of a stroke or something, I think. Um, <laughs> so we're in helium storage, again, follow the path around. And just go straight through the double doors here. We're just going for a nice jog, getting our sprint on in a minute, getting our cardio up. And we basically come to the sort of main little area where everything sort of took place. But going to the back of the room, there's a monitor that you need to scan. And there's a there's an iPad, and you've got this sort of letter here for Sarah. Um, you've got an iPad with an email on it on this desk as well. Again, if you want to read that. Right, so go ahead, but there's nothing else really in this room. There's a hologram, a mini hologram of a hologram. That's nothing, but we'll just go to the front of the sort of lecturer's desk part now. There's another letter for you to pick up if you want to read that. But what we will be doing, actually, there's an audio directly in front of us, just under the tunnel right here. So obviously listen to that. We'll get an achievement for this as well. Because uh, this is the last audio log of the game. Next, get your asinine friend up. Go to the pipe underneath there. And you'll see this little rubber ducky. Push him out a little bit. And then just pick him up and collect him. So we've got to collect two ducks in this level. This one here. And there's one which is about five minutes away. So you'll get an achievement for collecting the second duck a little bit later on. But make sure to grab that first duck first. Grab your asinine friend. Go into... Uh, go to the left room right here and obviously interact with the switch at the very end on the right hand side to let us in Here he is now we can get in again There's a couple of items for you to pick up and read one directly on your left uh, I tell you what so th these expensive iPad looking things Surely if you think you can get home you'd be taking them with you really wouldn't you make a bloody mint for them messing you around uh, Blueprints there again if you Again, if you want to have a look, not really worth your time looking at the blueprints, to be honest. But away we can go. and just keep moving forward now. Jump to make yourself move faster. <laughs> you always found that to be better. I never know why. You can sprint as much as you want, but actually to help yourself move faster, it's pressing the A button. 
So go to this monitor, press the A button now, and we're going to start getting some... Sorry, no, wrong part. I thought this was the water with all the electric bit. <laughs> Ain't you in for a shock later on. Nah, get it? Shock, electric? Yeah, funny. Real funny. Uh, go to this helium canister right here. This is an empty one for us to scan. So we are getting very much closer now to the end of our collectibles. Keep on moving forward. Go up the stairs. Oh, it's all fun and games this level. Go to the right, jump down. And what we have to do now is push this sort of big canister. You see, you'll see two gaps, one on the left, one on the right. We can't get up with ladders, so we've got to push this sort of in the middle. And this is the water that we're in with the electric. So we won't be able to start the electric until just a little bit later on. So make sure you get this into a good position before you begin, because if you obviously end up getting shocked, you'll have to start a little bit further um, a little bit further away, which can be a pain in the ass, but you should be good. I actually do almost mess it up, but, you know, we're all good. So we need to grab that uh, little canister, the only canister there that we jumped into, and then place it in. And this will start ye old electric, so, like I said, it's going to be a good shocking time for us. <laughs> good shocking time, I'm so funny. Carefully jump. I almost over jumped the jump which just <laughs> would have sucked in qu quite honestly so now we're at the other side let's um, use the <laughs> the monitor again now what this does is just times the electric so it's not on constantly so it'll come off and come on um, very easy to do but now we'll just go back to the main part again wait so just jump on it go ahead jump on the canister looking thing wait until the electric starts again for just a minute so it will be every sort of I think about 10 to 15 seconds something like that so as soon as it finishes just go straight off again mess that up a little bit there press the X button to push it and I just jump back on it because yeah like I said every 10 to 15 seconds I think the electric comes back on but it's not too bad so so all you got to do is just push it down to the middle of these little bit of electricity boys and jump to the other side. Woo! So then, now we've got that little bit out of the way, basically we're going to be grabbing the other duck now. So go back down the way you came. You see this little uh, helium th uh, canister. Go to the left of that, through the doors, and we're into some water. Jump if you want to go a little bit quicker. Don't know if it makes a difference. But in this room right here, you will see this duck with a creepy red balloon tied to it. Collect that for the achievement. That is actually it, the duck. The clown is in duck form, and he's going to rip your ass into shreds. <laughs> Pennywise, duck-wise. I, I, there's probably a couple of jokes somewhere in there. I'm, I'm tired, I'm sorry. But <laughs> anyway, so what? Uh, my torch has just run out now. In fact, actually, I forgot which button. I've been using it all throughout the game, and I forgot which button to um, <laughs> the torch was at this point. So I just wait for it to just... Uh, Regenerate itself, there we go. So now we can go back the way we came. So we're going, again, we're going back up the stairs this time. And you see the electric? Yeah, yeah, you can, they, they can screw off this time. We're going straight ahead. Happy days, so we've done that bit. We are getting closer and closer to the end now. I'd say we're about 20 minutes finishing, but if you just go down to this little pit right here, to the right, there's a bunch of pipes for another big scannable item for us to scan. So make sure to grab that. And if you have a look then, that is the big sort of collapsed wall we need to get through. So a couple of things we've got to do here, but we will get there. Right then, so first things first, go through the monorail on the left. We ain't going through, <laughs> we're not going through this this time. Go ahead and scan the big computer monitor. And then to the left of it, as you can see, is the hologram. So go ahead and watch that. Isaac? Isaac? 
for a big, big short, uh, big, big, big one. What's going on? Uh, so stay there, stay there. I just need to. Um... Is that helium? No, it's. It's Sarah. Uh, it's for Kathy. Okay, she's she's waiting. She's on the ark, uh, and I just I just need to to get this to her. Isaac, what are you talking about? Uh, three, three. We made we made we made three arcs for Outward. Yeah, they're gone. No, no, no. In the end, there was only enough fuel for two arcs. So, so MacArthur moved the uh, the sick, the the cryo patients, to to the last one, uh, and Kathy, Kathy's, she's still on the ark, stuck here on the moon. Wait. But with this, uh, I can, I can. I Isaac, can... I'm sorry, but Earth is our first priority. Earth's beyond saving, Sarah. With or without the MPT, our only hope, Kathy's only hope is out. Listen to me. We cannot give up on Earth. It's our home. Kathy's home. And think about Claire. She's made her decision, and I, I can't go back to Earth. But with Kathy and Outward, there's a, there's a chance to start over a new dawn. We do what we must to keep them safe, even if they don't understand. But we can be wrong, Isaac. You said it yourself. MacArthur's wrong. Sarah! Outward is wrong! Sarah! Everything about this is... <gasps> What's... <laughs> I... Uh, I... Uh, you, you must understand. I... Uh, I have to go. <laughs> X is the terminal. Send it off. Isaac! No, 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 no! Sarah! Sarah, don't do this! I can't let you take it. No! 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 Stay with me. Stay, stay with me. I'm sorry, Isaac. Okay, okay, come, come, come I'm so sorry about that. It's okay. It's okay. Don't, don't, don't worry. It's the only way I could help. Even if you'd hate me for it. <laughs> okay, easy now, Sarah. Listen to my voice. Don't, don't close your eyes. Hey, buddy. Sarah. Hey, hey, Sarah, no. Almost there. No, 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 no. Sarah? Sarah? It's okay. It's okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Alex. No one needs to see this. Damn, so there we go then. That is the fate of Sarah. Go directly ahead of you, by the way, first. Um, but that is the fate of Sarah. Or maybe potentially it is. Maybe potentially it isn't. But, uh, yeah, Isaac, the, the moral of the story there is... Isaac was a dick, and then after stabbing her, went, Oh shit, I can't escape. Oh, I'm so sorry, what have I done? You shouldn't have been a dick and stabbed the dude. Come on. But yeah, you should have got an achievement. If you've been following the video, you should have got an achievement for uh, getting all of the holograms. Now, as you've just seen, we've got our little asinine friend to push a button. And that he's able to give us this canister. We're actually using this as a weight now. So go across the bridge there, as you've seen. Put it on this little weight plate and that will... <coughs> excuse me. That'll leave the door open for us. Have a look at that green gooey stuff if you want, but there's nothing that is any good at the minute. Take out this um, dead cell, this dead bit of... I, was going to, I keep going to call him lithium, but it's not lithium. It's just a canister. Dead canister of deadness. 
And with that, we can put that in place of the working canister. We'll go ahead and grab that, then go for a nice run. I'm going to tell you all this World's Strongest Astronaut stuff. We must be feeling bloody knackered by now. Uh, but anyway, go ahead, put that in. And now the door on the left will open for us. Happy days. Go ahead, burn down these locks with this door. You know, for some reason, this was one aspect of the game I really enjoyed as well. Even though it could have been a bit of pain in the ass sometimes, shooting the gold locks off doors. So, jump down, uh, move this onto what is basically a conveyor belt on the right-hand side. So, we'll have to jump back up there now. Um, the only reason we can't get it out of there is because there's electric belts in the way, or electric wires in the way. And we don't want to die. We've come so far got so far but in the end it doesn't even matter i've tried too hard I, let's lose the lincoln park please uh anyway as we've seen we grabbed the canister we're not we're done with that bit of room but there is something we can now place this canister into uh, what this will do is open the room on your right so now we can go in and just push the button and get that big crate boy out here Here we go then, give him a push, turn him around so you can actually get through, that'll always be handy. And what we're doing, we're sort of placing it between, sort of halfway between the monorail, and you'll see why. There's broken steps that we need to actually get up to, we can't just simply push this down, because the monorail is obviously in the way. So, uh, you could have probably done a better job than me there, turning the little canister we had around. But, on top of the bridge, there are two golden wires ready to be snapped, shoot them both. And that will end this portion of the game. Now we can go to the next one after the monorail smashes it to pieces. So happy days there, and we have finally done this bit. Now we are coming up to the last miscellaneous achievement of the game. Now, what we have to do then is push our little canister friend, just keep pushing him forward, and there's a little target up ahead. But basically, there's going to be like this big massive mechanism, this big massive machine that just shoots pulses out. And obviously, our job is to avoid the pulses by hiding behind sort of shadowy pillars. Now, for the achievement, I'm not sure if we've got to get through it without dying or without being hit. So, if you do get hit, don't worry, just make sure not to die. Get to the end, but before using the elevator, don't, just don't access the elevator because you actually um, get a checkpoint and you actually have to restart the chapter just to get to this point again. So, this bit should be fine. Wait until the screen goes back to normal and then just go into this little room right here. But it's after we push this button then, this is where the achievement will begin. So you've got to wait, as you can see, wait until the shadowy pillar starts going through. Just make sure to obviously stay behind this shadowy pillar because it'll shoot this big mass. I think you can get hit maybe once or twice and then you will die. So I'm pretty sure you cannot die at this point to get the achievement. Be careful with this first bit, it can be a bit tricky. But my advice is just to let it sort of pulse off once or twice. The screen goes very blurry, so the only advice I can give is just, you know, have good, eye <laughs> have good eyesight at this point. And make sure you can see where you're sort of stopping behind the shadowy pillar. So again, sometimes you might just be, even if you're a little tiny bit off, I don't think it's too bad. But again, as soon as it stops, sort of wait until it happens once or twice no need to rush for this bit again so bam as soon as it's on you go you go and just wait for the and just get i almost messed it up there actually As 
So then, there's the elevator, but before doing that, just don't actually access that room first. What I would do is wait outside it, because as you can see, I've just got a checkpoint. I've just got a save point, so if I somehow messed it up, uh, which obviously, luckily I didn't, you sort of might have to wait a little bit. So my advice is definitely, if you think you've messed it up, do not go into the room first. You still should be safe, so you shouldn't get hit. But just make sure to wait until the achievement unlocks first before moving on. Otherwise, as I said, you'll have to go through the entire chapter 6 again. And it can be... Well, it's fun the first time, but, you know, having to do it a second time just to get to basically the end of the game can be a pain in the dick. So, going up the elevator, of course, something else goes wrong for us, because that's what normally happens. Ghostly uh, <laughs> thing. Ghostly door opens there. Give that a little whack, and now we've got to basically run. So, fly down, boy. Fly down. Right. Now, this next bit, you can see these little, these big pipes. You get caught by one of these pipes, you are on the floor, and you are dead. So, just wait until it goes past, and run on by. Again, same with this bit. Wait till it goes past. And then we should be safe on this bit. Jump up. I actually almost get caught. You can get to the very left-hand side because there's just that little bit of gap for us to nip into, which is all good. So if you feel like you're about to mess up, just get to the left-hand side quick as you can. And there's that little gap as he takes our assy friend out. There's only really one path for us to go. Now, important here, wait on the middle of the bridge. You see this little different colored part of the bridge? Very important to wait there because that's the gap that the big massive pipes go on to. Um, I struggle with this bit for some reason. It just wouldn't want to shoot, I don't know why. Pain in the ass, quite frankly. But eventually we get there. Again, you know, we've only got two minutes of oxygen left, but there's no point rushing. We've got another refill canister coming up now. There's only one way to go, which is up the old wooden stairs. Oh, they're metal, pretty much. Here's the refill tank, so get yourself refilled up. And all we're doing is basically climbing up. Avoiding the pipes and climbing up, so there we go. You see, the one's got electric, but, you know, you should time your jumps. It's very easy to just time your jumps on this bit, since you get a hell of a leap and enough time in the air. Now then, it's just directly to the right, up again, couple of platforms, up again, another couple of platforms, and just climb on up, and we are basically, we've only got now, I think, one more thing to do, so if you want to refill yourself there, hey, give you, give you a little um, blue oxygen balls, a little refill, by all means. And just wait now. So obviously wait for them to dim down. They'll sort of blow you off. <laughs> blow you off. <laughs> that sounds wrong. Uh, nothing to do here. Wait. That is an actual... That That is one that will pop out and pop back in. So just... Obviously just time it perfectly and easily. Go to the left. Up the maintenance stairs. Through the door now. Oxygen returns perfectly. So now this is where all the stuff... Starts getting insane. All you've got to do now is just press the button and watch the cutscene. Releasing reserves. MPT overloading. MPT overloading. MPT overloading. MPT overloading. Brother, that looked like it hurt. So now we are getting time. We've only got just over two minutes now. What we have to do is basically, uh, well, basically end the game. And the way we do that, we can't sprint any faster. Again, there's only one way to go. So we're going up the stairs and we'll be using a computer like we've done earlier on to sort of aim the big massive laser onto a target. Only this time it can be a little bit trickier because our main character keeps blacking out and as you're doing that the sort of target moves away so you've got to be extremely careful here so grab that 
and eventually we'll start getting it, um, our systems in motion. It moves very, very slowly, but as I said, every time our main character blacks out, you see the target just slowly drifts away down, and it won't actually lock onto the target, so you've got to have your wits about you this time. So, and the target is quite small as well, so be careful. So you can see there, I'm all good, black out, and now my target's up to the right. So you've got to be immediately sort of aware of where you are. And that's all there is to it. Again, the timing is pretty generous, but obviously just have your wits about you, and all you've got to do is wait until the green circle gets all the way around. Top injury, though. Well, that part was a little annoying, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, guys and gals, this is the last tiny piece to do now. All you've got to do is just follow the holograms and the end gaming cutscene will begin to reveal the shocking revelation. So I'll say my goodbyes here. I'll tell you what, this game was super incredible and I had an absolute joy of playing it. I loved absolutely every second of it. And again, hopefully you guys did too. Hopefully the game was great and of course, hopefully the guide helped you out. And as usual, we had a good few laughs along the way. So thank you so, so, so much for watching. You know, if this guide and video did help, then, you know, give that subscribe button a hit, like and comment also. And again, you can find me on many socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and even Patreon now. So if I see any of you on there, thank you so much once again. Your support really does mean the world to me. Thanks again for watching, guys and gals. See you in the next one. Big love.